Hey guys, welcome. This video is really all about how to bike anywhere, even in the most unbikeable areas. If you're thinking, oh, my area is not bike friendly, I don't know how to get anywhere, it's too dangerous. Well, think again, guys, I have the secret sauce for you. But before we get to that, I just wanna say welcome to the channel. This channel is all about how to make biking part of your daily life. How do you make it just interesting and exciting and, and healthy and save money and, and save your health and save the planet all at the same time. So. Give it a thumbs up if it's helpful or inspiring and consider subscribing for more content like this, all right? So to get us started, backstory here. I have been cycling, making biking part of my life for years and I particularly wanna talk about my experience in riding from New Jersey to New York when I was living in, in New York, working, living in New Jersey and working in Manhattan, New York. And I, would, I was commuting every single day. I did that for years, every single day from New Jersey to New York. And the reason I'm sharing this is, is, is not a, it's a humble brag. It's, I'm definitely proud of it because it's very challenging at times, but also from everywhere I've biked in the world, I biked in Japan, I biked in the UK, I biked in Montreal, Canada, I biked in North Carolina, all different places in America. New Jersey and New York are by far the most complicated and scary places to bike. So I'm trying to give you confidence that it is entirely possible to bike anywhere. And I'm gonna give you my methods for finding those routes that are safe and how, how you, why the way that you're thinking about biking in, in your area is probably not accurate. And there's actually ways around it. So um, in my experience from biking for, for years in New Jersey, New York, I never, I never once had an incident or accident or even came close to an accident, not even once. And you might not believe me <laughs> because New York is pretty notorious for crazy drivers and all that. But there are a few things that I did, and I'll share that at the end, that made it really not that dangerous to, to do for me. And, and I had a few keys, just basically a few keys to help me do that, all right? So for me, the, the method that I use primarily is, first of all, you have to try it. Like you, you don't know that somewhere is dangerous until you try it. And if you try a route, a road, and you just are frightened because there are trucks or cars or anything like that, then just don't take that road. The key here, guys, is there's an app, a handy app called Google Maps. <laughs> uh, if you have access to Google Maps in your country, wherever you are, take out Google Maps and find anything within a five, five mile radius that you go to often, the library, the park with the kids, or to school, to work, wherever, within your radius, put in the destination, and then push the biking icon. And the magical thing about the biking icon is that it will show you the the recommended route for cycling it's not going to take you on the highways it's not going to take you on the main roads the main roads it's going to take you on the back roads to get to your destination and that's the secret sauce guys there are so many back roads to get to your frequent destinations that you just don't see because we're always driving to our destinations which means we're driving on the main roads that are trafficked heavily trafficked by cars if you can find the back roads, even if it's slightly off, or if you're fortunate enough to live in an area with greenways, hallelujah, then you have an opportunity to, to take those back roads to your destination and get to where you need to go promptly. It's gonna be, it's gonna be safe, you're gonna feel excited and all that, okay? But my main point is that usually routes by bike are more dangerous than we perceive them to be. And in this last part of this video, I'm gonna share just a few tips about how to make it really a lot safer, okay? Uh, the number one thing is have flashing lights on your bike. If you can have flashing front lights and flashing back lights, that is a clear signal to everyone around you, to other pedestrians or cars, especially cars, that you are there, especially if you're riding at night. But even if you're riding in the day, you should use flashing lights because studies have shown that it's helpful for other people to see. Just flashing lights in the rear, in the back, in the front, in the back. I'll put some links down below for my guides on how to get all this uh, this gear and stuff. Okay. So the second thing uh, is to, of course, use your your signals. That's obvious, right? The third, the really important thing I want to get to you guys is when you're cycling, especially around cars. It doesn't matter where you are. You have to pretend that you are invisible. This is this is by this is the only thing that kept me alive in New York. You have to pretend that no one can see you. And the reason that this is really helpful is because when people are driving, they're not looking for cyclists. They're not. And it's not because people are, you know, a-holes or, or inconsiderate of cyclists. Of course, some people are, but that's not the reason. The reason that people, uh, drivers do not see cyclists is because they are not looking for cyclists. They're looking for cars. When they're turning a corner or they're turning at a stoplight, they're looking for oncoming traffic from cars. They are not looking for you or I <laughs> riding our bike on the side of the road at a very slow pace. They're looking for other cars. It's kind of similar or akin to 
if your spouse, you know, if, or your mom, uh, you, you're looking in the refrigerator for the peanut butter. And you're like, I can't find the peanut butter. Where's the peanut butter? I can't find it. And then she's like, it's right in front of your face. Or like, you ever been through that experience? It's the same thing. It's because people, we tend to have a, a very uh, specific thing in mind when we are looking for something and anything outside of that tunnel vision is just not existent so when 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 drivers are looking on the road they're not looking for cyclists so you've got to pretend and assume that no one sees you and no one hears you this is also the reason why i don't use the bell when i'm in new york everyone uses a bell i don't use a bell ever because if i assume for a second that someone can hear me which they probably can't especially if they're in a car then i'm i'm gonna smack right into that car or into that cyclist People cannot hear you and I cannot assume that people can hear me. And that is the safest way to go about cycling in a city or anywhere that is heavily trafficked by cars or pedestrians. Pretend that you don't exist. I know that sounds a little morbid or sad, but it's true. You just have to pretend like no one can see you and you'll be fine, okay? All right, so those are my tips, how to stay safe and how to ride anywhere, all right? If this video was helpful, subscribe. Give it a thumbs up so other people can find it, you know? And uh, yeah. Check out our website, biketrailerplanet.com for everything you need about how to bike everywhere and make life awesome with cycling, okay? All right, take care.